Let's start with launching a DigitalOcean Ubuntu server. Pretty easy, pretty easy task. Um, not in general, but with DigitalOcean, they really did a great job um, making this particular task super easy. So we're just going to log right into DigitalOcean. I'm already logged in, which is awesome. Um, yeah, so the way DigitalOcean does um, their server configuration is basically um, you spin up the server from the UI and then um, they expect you to basically take it from the command line or from some sort of uh, some sort of uh, web dev client. Um, but spinning up the exact sort of server you need is um, just super easy. So uh, you can see here we host a couple of things on um, on DigitalOcean. Um, some of these are in production, some of these aren't. But I'll run you guys through um, creating an Ubuntu uh, Ubuntu box with DigitalOcean. It's pretty straightforward. Um, we just go over to Create Droplet. Um, so they give you a bunch of different options here on the particular OS that you want to load. Um, I personally like Ubuntu, uh, but CentOS is, is actually pretty sweet too. Um, but I'm going to just select the smallest size because I don't want to get charged. Um, you can choose the data center region, which is really useful. Um, I'm in Boston, so the New York data center makes the most sense. Um, and then within that region, um, there's actually a subset of uh, data centers that you can choose from. So we'll go with New York 3. Um, and then there's just some other configuration options having to do with uh, the networking and things like that and backups. If you're running production, get backups. Um, I, uh, I did some extensive work on one of my servers and I ended up uh, erasing it by accident and I did not have backups checked and uh, that was painful. Um, I use that all the time now, definitely worth the uh, added cost. Um, you can set up your SSH key right here, I don't think you need to necessarily, um, but you could do that right here if you wanted. Um, I guess there's some more sort of networking aspects here. We just want one droplet. Um, again, this box is just gonna be used for testing purposes. They give you a default um, host name, which just is uh, descriptive of the particular system you're going to be running. Um, let's go ahead and rename this for, uh, for clarity's sake to um, tutorials. Um, and this right here is really the magic of, um, of DigitalOcean. Um, you know, we just made those selections and it's going to spin up that resource for us right away, uh, which is just really nice. Um, it's also just really nice how they charge you. Um, you can, you know, create these droplets and you can destroy them, um, you know, at your leisure. And it'll, uh, there's no, there's no uh, fee for, for starting a new droplet. It's a pay as you go sort of resource usage. Um, payment model, which was really, really nice. But so it looks like that box is already set up. Um, we have an IP address, we have a host name, we have our, uh, our resources and, and selections. Um, you could go ahead and add your domain and configure um, your networking aspects or, or your DNS aspects. Um, we're not going to do that right now because we're not going to associate this box with any domain name. Um, but one of the things we do want to do is, you know, the question is, how do we get into our box? Um, and um, the way DigitalOcean works is it emails you your credentials. Um, so it's going to email you a username and password, and uh, you can just use that to log right into your new box. Um, so I'm just going to pull up my email, and I am going to get those credentials, and we'll log in. Okay, great. That 
is not the email. Here's the email. DigitalOcean gives us the IP, the username, and the password. Uh, normally, I wouldn't show you guys the password, um, but by the time this is viewed by anyone, this box will be destroyed, so it doesn't matter. Um, all right, so I'm just going to copy this because I'm lazy. Actually, you know what? So we're going to open up a terminal, and we're going to see if we can connect to our new server that we just started. It says it's good to go, so let's try that out. Um, I'm running Mac, uh, native terminal, uh, pretty straightforward. Um, and I'm just going to do SSH root. Uh, that's what these credentials are for. We'll throw in that IP 104.131.115.233. We do. And it's asking for the password. We can actually just copy and paste that, which is really nice. All right, it's going to prompt us, I think, to change our password. Yeah. So we're going to re-enter the current password. It's going to say enter new password. Re-enter. And we are in our server. Um, now, I don't think there's anything here. So this is a basic, um, just Ubuntu server. Um, you can see this, uh, this file directory should look um, pretty familiar. Um, if we go to our IP from a browser, a public browser, I'm actually interested. I don't know what it's going to tell us. Yeah, so this is exactly what we'd expect. Um, there's nothing set up here for internet traffic. We're accessing on SSH. Um, so really, this is the first step. Um, you know, we just set up uh, an Ubuntu server um, that could, it could be a website. Um, it, it, you know, has the potential to be a website, has the potential to be um, any sort of, you know, public uh, service. Um, could be we could set this up as an API. We could set this up as a a mail relay service or a proxy server. Or really anything we want. Um, but that is um, really uh, the first.